Out in the country, the ideals that we dream, we live. It's hard to be in this place and not feel thanksgiving. It's hard to be in this place, I say impossible, and not to feel one's heart opened by not only the people, but the environment. Joy is wonderful. Joy is what gives you strength. So you need to do Shabbat. You need to have joy. You need to let go. You need to reach ecstasy. That which is Jewish is not something that's fixed in time. It's no ism. It's no istic. It's an ing. It's, it's happening. It's living. It's being. It's Jewish ing. When Jewish is together, we celebrate, we make, we do, we dance, we sing. We Jews go for periods where the faith goes down and then it rekindles in new forms. I need to learn as much as I can of the tradition in order to transform it, to continue the tradition of renewal, which we have had for thousands of years. If not, we would not be here. Joyce is really um, a microcosm of the greater Jewish community. Although nobody seems to be bound to institutional religion, uh, you find very, very traditional people to really weigh out people. And it, it's just great how everybody can get together and express their own opinions. Everybody is a, is a guru, or I call them a juru. <laughs> Conventional souls who just simply want to keep on going and doing the traditional things, revolutionary souls sense that this is not how the world was meant to be. They sense that there has to be something better, so something in them burns to break out of the confinements, because if a soul knows that the world needs redemption, then anything is possible. In fact, in Jewish tradition, they say, one of the things they ask you when you go up to heaven after 120 years, is they ask you, see Pisa Li Yeshua, did you yearn for the redemption? Did you burn for the redemption? A Jew is supposed to be on fire to redeem this world. The challenge from last year was how to bring the joys of Jewishing into our lives. And that's still a continuing issue. We talk about it a lot. How, how to keep the specialness that we've created here, which is a, a week away from the rest of our lives. This is the only place I've ever found in my life where every person's light has a place to shine. If we were to regard everyone as though they were the Messiah, looking for gentle work or an outstretched arm, then if they choose not to reveal themselves within our time, it will not have mattered. If we were to regard everyone as though they were the Messiah. Here I am at the joys of Jewish age. My third one. And the joyous thing is the people here, meeting the individuals with their various talents, potentials, their searching natures. Me, who was raised reform and uh, was into Hinduism for, and yoga for about 10 years, now I'm into uh, Judaism. Uh, the other religions uh, helped me come back to my roots. Uh, there, there came a point when I sort of left Judaism for a while.
and part of that was when I first came out to California and it was because I felt it had no spirit for me it had no more meaning for me it wasn't that I didn't still love it and really want to connect to it but it was dead it didn't have a life for me it didn't have a life force for me and I respected it too much to be with it without having a life force it felt like when I got my ordination, I didn't really feel that I had the skills to be the kind of a rabbi that I really thought a rabbi should, should be. It came to a point where I didn't feel I was growing spiritually anymore. And um, I felt that I was being discouraged from attempting to, to grow more as an individual. And uh, that was one of the things that led to my uh, leaving the uh, Hasidic establishment. When I was five, I ran away from Cheder. When I was six, I ran away from Cheder. When I was 13, I was bar mitzvah, and I stopped lear learning Hebrew. I had to run away because I was part of a generation that had to rediscover Torah to make it alive for us for a new time. And sometimes to make something new and to see it differently, you have to leave it a little bit so that, that you could then go back and see things in the Torah that we didn't see before because we were caught up with old patterns and old ways of looking at things. I was raised in a traditional home, conservative background. I went to Hebrew school to be bat mitzvahed and went on through confirmation and then pretty much left Judaism for a few years. I didn't turn to anything else, but I felt that I needed a break. It was on a Purim night. I was listening to some Purim Torah and um, I, s I suddenly realized I wanted to convert to Judaism. It was hard for me to find a place to combine religion with spirituality and mysticism without being really orthodox. Because I have been raised without a strong Jewish tradition, a strong religious tradition, I want to say. Uh, I'm not inhibited in changing anything. I have no barrier to break, which gives me a lot of freedom. And I can go straight to the joy of my discoveries of the tradition and not be struggling too much. For myself, right now, I've achieved a certain level of integration of the Hasidic um, philosophy that I studied and the uh, ability to, uh, to show it and demonstrate it more than I've ever uh, been able to before. Um, I feel I've integrated it with those things that I, I needed to learn about my own body and my own emotions and my own mind and my own will. I tried to run away at first and it kept I kept coming back to it in one way or another. Now I'm in an interesting situation of having two spiritual paths, Zen and Judaism, and uh, my, my uh, challenge is to try to integrate them. And my particular path, to a large extent, is through science and through spiritual religion. And, and this community is one that supports me in being able to combine those aspects of my being and trying to integrate them so that I can um, talk about science to my religious community and talk about other ways of viewing reality, more spiritual ways of viewing reality to my scientific community. For me, I think part of it is figuring out how much I really want to carry along with me. And I know that the music, the dancing, the food, the joy, Shabbos. I want that, the Shabbos. I mean, I. I've gone back. When I sit in my yoga meditation every morning, as I'm doing the breathing, Instead of using a Hindu mantra, which I still sometimes use, I use something like the tetragrammaton, the letters of the divine name, coordinating that with the breaths. Bring your arms up, cross with the left hand inside. I teach Tai Chi, which is, I feel, a very holy work of having people tune into their universal life energy into others' life energy. And I feel this is a very Jewish work in the world, in that the Jewish point of view is that we're all from one source, one breath, one, one inspiration. Even as I've become more universal, I've become more particular. My Jewishing matters more to me. I want to know more about it. I want to practice it and live it.
growing up in my childhood in California, every time I saw a uh, formal Orthodox practice in Judaism, uh, I rejected and w it found it repugnant. Now, dominion before, to me, seems such a strange thing. These men were sitting there and repeating the same words over and over again, 300 t times a year, 10,000 times in a lifetime, the same words. What kind of sense? Do, I mean, it didn't make sense. Now it's just fascinating, beautiful meditation. I mean, I, I get to say a 70-page long mantra every morning. My beliefs as a Jewish woman that I am an equal and that I am to be counted in the minion and that the forms of prayers which have been developed mostly by the male Jewish community is not the only form of prayer that there is and that we have to open our we have to expand our horizons and open our minds and have a more full human expression and through this find our connection with God and with the universe. <laughs> What, what drew me from the beginning and what still is my main interest is Jewish ritual. I think that ritual enables people to make a really deep connection with, with the earth, with people, with their own innermost being. And it almost doesn't matter what you say about it, it's when you do it. God is in everything I see, for God is in my heart. happening in the Jewish community here is a renaissance. It's people who have come from a lot of different backgrounds and somehow something was missing but the yearning and the desire never left people. Everyone is really finding their joy in, in the old and the new and bringing them together. In fact my, my really strong experience last year at Joy's was all of a sudden two very strong things in my life, my, Jude my Jewishing and my spirituality came together. We also have a tradition that says Adonai Echad, that everything is one, that everything is connected. And the New Age is one that stresses the interconnectedness of all life. And our tradition talks about a messianic age when all nations will come to worship the one God together and the earth will be full of the knowledge of Adonai. And what does the New Age talk about? The new consciousness, the divine consciousness of love coming into the world, the knowledge of God and all people worshiping together. child and man, and as the elders were making bundles from the prayer books, we all began to dance. We dance, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat we love you, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Kermit. God respects me when I work, but loves me when I sing. So we step back on Shabbos and say, for once we let go of our design, purpose, ulterior motives, plan, formations, imaginations, all from the root Yetzer, to imagine, to form, shape, devise, and create. So having tasted of the tree of the consciousness of the Yetzer, of those, those facilities of good and bad, we have to give up our purpose and design one day a week so that we can come back infused with the light and the inspiration from that oneness so that we bring that consciousness in the way we live in the week so that the week is suffused with that and reflects that light. And above in the Shabbat distance, I heard a voice so still and small. It said, you carry the joy wherever you go. You just have to open your mouth because you do not need a rabbi. You do not need a cantor. You do not even need a community president to take your spiritual rent. You just sing, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So that's some of the Shabbos in the week. That's the flow of, of 
of flow of it. And it's the best time there is. It's like we know ourselves as God. Don't have to do anything one day a week. You don't have to do anything to prove that you're all right. That God loves us as we are. <laughs> So the soul of the people is in its music, in its stories, in its dances. And I hope that my music, uh, the music that I try to teach and I perform, also has that, that messianic longing. Sometimes, literally, the texts are taken about messianic themes or about liturgical themes in Jewish music, which I still feel is the, the heart and soul of Jewish music. What's authentic Jewish music? Uh -huh. What's authentic Jewish art? Okay. And I've played for people Yiddish. And they say, ah, oh, that's authentic Jewish music. But if I play like one of my songs or another Jewish American song, uh, oh, well, that's, you know, it's goyish. You're just playing American folk music. Uh -huh. And I point out that, what do you think these Yiddish tunes came from? <laughs> right. German yeah. marching yeah. tunes. Or Turkish. Yeah. Turkish, Turkish or yeah. Sephardic tunes, or Sephardic too. Sephardic tunes as well. So the, the, the tradition, our tradition, is to borrow. I mean, lots of people do it. We really do it because we're all borrowing. Country. Creative borrowing, and then we do something. We give a Jewish twist. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, like, as a musician, what I'm trying to do is, like, reflect back to my people what they're doing. No need to go to school to learn what the golden rule. Don't do to someone else something you don't like thyself. This the holy music. Praise Ja! 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 When we love one another beyond the conditions and accept the presence of the other, we discover God, we create God, we become enablers of God. So Shekhinah, the indwelling presence of God, is there. When that happens, that's what Shabbos is about. We bring God into the world. To learn that all the liberation movements that have come up since the end of the Shoah, I believe is God working in us and through us toward righting that wrong. It can't be undone, but we can learn not to repeat it. We can learn a different way to live. I hear many people talking about the Holocaust and saying never again, but then turning their back to the issues that confront us today. Uh, for example, right now uh, the, there is increasing pressure on Jews in Russia. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. And I know that if people had talked, had said stop, before the Holocaust happened, many, many of us could have been saved. The um, testing of how the world would react was done very slowly over several years. And so I feel that now when we are being tested, we need to say no right away. The world now is threatened with nuclear holocaust and there's so much despair in the world. We are the first victims of modern technological holocaust. We experienced it. So if there's anyone who should have total despair, it's us. We came out of this to witness rebirth. That out of the ashes of Auschwitz, we saw people, broken, broken people. The vision of Ezekiel. Ezekiel the prophet was shown the bones. And he asked, he asked God, his heart was broken. He said, God, can these bones live? And God says, I will bring them out of their graves. And we saw it happen in our generation, the vision of Ezekiel, where the bones were literally taken out of the graves of Auschwitz and brought to the land and healed. And, and the beginning of the prophecies of hope and redemption, beginning, 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 the sprouts coming true in our day. Mm -hmm. That the Jewish response to the Holocaust is to bring Shabbos into the world, because it's Shabbos that teaches of us of our oneness with all being. Because we're a universal people, because the, our karma is such that we're not just a typical ethnic group, but we really feel this yearning to do something for the world. And it's so true, you look at every movement in the last 200 years that set out to reform the world, Jews are less than 1% of the world's population. 
But if you look at every radical movement, every religious movement of the New Age, you find Jews are at least a third of these movements. There's something about our energy that wants to get out there and do something to bring the redemption into this physical world. So it's in our culture. We're burning with that flame. Very much who I am in the world comes from the Jewish part of me. Um, I've been involved in anti-nuclear kinds of activities in the last two years, and I know that that's the Jewish part of me that believes in hope, that talks about avodah in, in this world, that we have to do something. We can't just depend upon our relationship with Hashem in a spiritual sense. That if I'm not doing something on a real ma'asit level, on a real day-to-day -day level, the world isn't going to change. And I take that very seriously. When the children of Israel had crossed the Red Sea and everyone was safely on the other side, the women began to dance. And Miriam, who was Moses' sister and a great prophetess and one whose visions and prophecies had really started the movement from Egypt, she began to dance with, with all the women. And it's said that had the men been able to dance with the women, and had understood this flow of movement and, and the way that the things moved in the world, there would have been a lot less need for so much written word and, and uh, still so much study in, in this area and that, that we might as Jews move more and sing more and, and be more connected with the earth in this way. I consider myself, though I'm, though I'm very observant, I consider myself a feminist. And what I mean by that is I think that Jewish women now have to find their own voice. I don't know if that means they're going to want to be equal to men and doing everything the same as men. Some women seem to want that and some don't. But to find their own voice and to be able to speak out and to know what they want and to, and to find out how they can get it. In some ways I feel now that the women are leading, at least in this community in California, the women are leading and it's going to take a little while for the men to readjust to that and, and be able to walk side by side again. Here in this, in my Jewish community, it doesn't matter what sex you are. It, it matters who you are and how you relate to other people. And I'm amazed at the community's ability to tolerate and accept the wide diversity of people, so many different personalities, so many different strengths and weaknesses, and to accept each person and give them a space to express themselves, to talk about areas where they need healing, and to be supportive. <laughs> In a year, we've shared a wedding, a bar mitzvah, um, a death. Things where our lives are very much connected and where we support each other through our transitions. So that it's, it's a Jewish community, but my entire life is shared with it. So that when I'm having problems at work, this is a community where I can come and talk about it. That's very important for me, that it isn't cut off. That my religious part of me, my Jewish part of me, isn't separated from the rest of me of how I live in the world and that's been absolutely crucial for me. I just have a community that's there for me and it kind of gives me an identity and makes me feel secure. We're beginning to trust each other, know each other enough, we're extending our family, we've experienced having children, bringing them into the world, some of our members have died, I mean it's like we're beginning to be a family and it's such a beautiful thing, it's like not to replace our family, but to take the place of our family that is not, for most of us, accessible here. And adding dimensions that many of us didn't have in our family life. It isn't a place where there's a leader. It's a place where we're all leaders. And that's how this community, I think, has lived for eight years, is that there's a dependence and an acknowledgement that we won't make it unless we acknowledge that we are each rebbies to each other and we each have something to learn from each other and to give to each other. What makes us Jews is that our history exists for the sake of the world, and therefore for that love to take place, we first have to love the world. And we first have to love all of life, all humanity, and then we can love Israel. We're really concerned with putting out a vision of world peace that's based on our own experience, not something that's intellectual or abstract, but that goes from person to person, and that respects each person's individuality well focusing on, on the elements in all of us that are universal and that cross racial, cultural, and religious lines. We're all one. The whole universe, even as we're individuated and different and separate and unique, there is a reality 
that is as strong as any separation that we'll ever know, and that's the reality of the union of all our being, of all of us. If I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? If I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I'm only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? And if not now, when? If not now, when? If not now, if not now. The world senses now what God said to us thousands of years ago in the desert. Behold, I am putting before you life or death, choose life. There was no time in human history where the entire planet was faced with such a choice. We could go into total destruction. And we have total death in front of us and total life. And we have to make a choice. And we hear the echo of, of God's voice to us in the desert is now the echo is coming to all humanity and God is telling us choose life. And it makes sense that a people that went into exile and are now experience redemption, that this is a people that is ultimately offering a promise of hope to the planet. Because we who have been everywhere and who have experienced exile everywhere and now are experiencing our ingathering, we are God's message of hope to the planet that, that redemption is possible for everyone. We feel it's a mitzvah to bring that in the world in this day and age. We need to bring joy, celebration, God's love, understanding, relationship, the things that really matter, giving the world a heart. All of us are playing messianic music. We're, we're playing music that's heralding the arrival of Messiah. And that's, that's everybody together. You know, there's one soul in the world. And it's, it's about time. If we were to regard everyone as though they were the Messiah, looking for a gentle word or an outstretched arm, then if they choose not to reveal themselves within our time, it will not have mattered. If we were to regard everyone as though they were the Messiah, looking for a gentle word or an outstretched arm, then if they choose not to reveal themselves within our time, 